Hello everybody! One more video um, I thought that I would make uh, before I sign off and close my computer and three more months happens and I haven't dropped a video. So I actually went back into my notes real quick to look and see at some of the requests that I've had because I write everything down. It's just a matter of sometimes I can't get to it, which is really disappointing. But one of the questions was, how do I start on a water path? And that is an excellent question, and I get it a lot. And you're going to find that it's different for everybody. Um, and so, first off, never judge yourself based on another witch or another water witch's practice or sea witch. Because for some people, they may dive right into the deep end and be able to do the backstroke perfectly, where other people might start in the shallow end and slowly move towards the deep end or never at all. And so there's a wide variety of um, uh, levels and places where you can enter the water. The first thing that you wanna remember is that water is fluid and therefore it takes on all of the ranges of emotion and energy meaning that it encompasses light dark and absolutely everything in between it can be all and so you will find that there are good benevolent spirits that want to help and work with you, such as mermaids and lake ladies. However, there's also going to be spirits that are baneful and that aren't good for you. So be careful when you do begin walking this path. And the one thing I will caution you against is listening to people that try and promote that water is only love and light because what they're doing is a great disservice to you. And it's really not fair for them to be filling your mind with these falsehoods when you can end up getting really hurt if you happen to go into the wrong dimension of water or step into um, a pond that perhaps has an angry water spirit. There's a really, really good reason that there's so many stories of mermaids and water fae that go from helping to harming. There's stories about mermaids drowning, taking captors, taking souls, collecting souls, and then there's stories of benevolent mermaids that help um, humanity by teaching things like herbal knowledge or magical knowledge or helping to build villages or helping to provide sustenance for villages. Um, and there's lots of old stories that give us both sides of this. Now, I say both sides, but water's not duality because you can't really just split it in half and be like, you're half this and half this. It literally is a spiral. And that spiral is always going to encompass all of the different energies. So that's the first thing that you need to know when starting your water path is it's going to be like the water. It's going to ebb and flow. There's going to be high tides and there's going to be low tides. The second thing is pull out all the things that are connected to water. Just because it's a water path doesn't mean things like shells, incense and um, sticks and stuff like that can't be used in your practice. In fact, I highly encourage you to go to the water and connect with the source, sometimes maybe taking a treasure back in exchange for an energetic offering. So start pulling those things out and build an altar. That's step two is build an altar or a shrine. Shrines are devotional spaces where altars are more working spaces. Um, that's step two. Two. Um, the next thing is practice. Practice, practice, practice. And you might be saying, cool, that's what I want to do, but I don't know how. And so there are a bunch of books out there for beginners. There are a bunch of books out there for intermediates. There is also no reason that you can't find a water-based spell on the internet and then tweak it to fit yourself and your own path. But that might be too much for you as well. So check out some of the different books on water. My book, Water Witchcraft, does have some really basic stuff in there that you can find, like how to create your magical waters. In fact, after your altar is set up, 
that's going to be something that you can start with is creating magical waters. You can create moon, full moon water, dark moon water, sun water. Uh, you can gather storm water, rain water. Um, so start collecting water and labeling them and putting um, dates, times, energy, sun, moon, whatever it is that you did creating your waters, start labeling them. The next thing that you're going to want to do is get a book of tides. And the reason that you want that is because you need to start documenting and journaling everything you do because some of them are going to work and some of them are going to fail spectacularly. And so you need to look at those processes after the fact and by keeping a journal of your process and how you did it and what worked and what didn't work, your practice then begins to become stronger because you can go back and say, ooh, A, B, and C worked, D, E, and F did not. So we're going to stick with this and let's try that spell again. That's the next thing are a series of experimental spells. And you might be going, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't even know how to cast a spell. I'm not ready to experiment. But let me uh, give you, let me just give you a tiny bit of encouragement here. So first off, yes, you can absolutely start practicing magic and start small. So for instance, do something like if like your very first spell. Don't don't be like I'm gonna change the world in my first spell, or I'm gonna get my ex back, um, or I'm gonna get my ex back. Like I'm gonna get him. Like don't don't start with any of that stuff. Um, you're just gonna blow yourself out. A series of experimental spells. Start with self love. Uh, that one is a great one. You work a really basic spell of self love and try it for a week, and see if it works. See if you actually do start feeling better about yourself. If you didn't, that's okay. Try it again. Rework your spell. Do something different. The next thing that you can do is start bringing in stuff like protection. Protection magic is great to start in the very beginning. In fact, you should. Don't be naive and think that there's people that won't come after you. I used to think that in a world full of witches and magical practitioners you would be surprised at who is secretly casting against other people. It's very, very strange. So make sure that you're protecting yourself, not only from spirits, but from other practitioners and from people that may have ill will against you. Keep doing that. Do protection spells once a week for like a couple of years. I know that that sounds like crazy, but why not, right? Like, don't you put your seatbelt on every time you get in the car? So same thing, do your protection magic every week. Eventually it's gonna get so dang good that you're gonna have to only do it maybe once every six months, or you'll start to have multiple different spells that you can refresh over time. Once you've got the protection spells down, jump on in there, luck, prosperity, and cast small things for yourself so that you can start finding a rhythm and start really kind of getting that like, okay, I've got this, I'm feeling good. Then when you're starting to be a little bit more confident, start casting on sight. Go to the beach and do a healing spell at the beach or at the river or go cast protection for the river itself. So I hope that this helps and gives you a couple of tips to begin your practice. If you liked what I said, awesome, write it down, take my advice. If you don't, that's cool. You still learned something. You learned what you didn't like. So I hope some of these tips help you to begin your own practice. And don't forget that witchcraft is a practice. And so practicing is only going to make you better. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.